I'm a, a family practitioner, medical doctor, and I'm in my 30th year of practice. I did my training at uh, the University of Illinois Abraham Lincoln School of Medicine in Chicago and then specialized in family practice at the University of Cincinnati uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I've been a clinician in mostly rural areas of Kentucky for the last 30 years. I have had experience in clinical research and some phase two and three FDA studies on pharmaceutical and non-pharmaceutical products. Uh, so that's been a, uh, an intriguing area of uh, my career. And I also have had training in functional medicine and have enjoyed sharing concepts and ideas with my patients about uh, non-traditional or complementary and alternative treatments for various uh, issues in health over the last 15 to 20 years. Uh, additionally, I operate and own a addiction recovery clinic with my wife, Patty. And so we uh, treat patients with opiate addiction and have done so for the past eight years. My introduction to the science of redox signaling uh, began about 17 months ago. And it's really been an eye-opener uh, and, a, and a way to kind of catch up on some of the basic sciences that we really don't apply in, in everyday uh, medical practice. So as I brought myself up to speed, I, I realized that a whole lot had changed since the late 70s when I t did my uh, cell and molecular biology courses. Uh, so much has changed. And so uh, what I'd like to do this morning is couch my comments in, in terms of the relevance for health practitioners. We in the healing sciences are acutely aware of the fact that our patients are arriving in our clinics with far more serious statuses of their health than, than even 10 years ago. People are coming with greater severity. They're coming in with uh, multiple layered issues of problems. In essence, people are arriving in our clinics with metabolic or physiologic ages far beyond their chronologic years. So this complexity and severity of, of, of illnesses is making the, the road to recovery very, very challenging. And uh, I talk to health practitioners on nearly a daily basis as we're all learning more and more about how to apply this new science of redox signaling uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. And I hear this commonly that it's been that there's at least a 10 or maybe 20 percent decrease in the effectiveness of our work uh, in the last five years compared to even uh, 15 years ago. So what, what about this new science of redox signaling? Uh, where does this fit in and, and what is it all about? This science represents the first new health technology in the last 30 years. If you stop and think about it, we began learning about vitamins and minerals um, that were uh, more readily accessible in, in the forms of multivitamins and, and uh, uh, more natural applications of, of mineral supplementation for our bodies in the 60s. In the 70s and 80s, we began hearing this word antioxidants. And so we were exposed to various products like vitamin C or vitamin E. Um, these products were up-regulating the production of our antioxidants. Then, then came along um, some of the juice products and other things that had a, a, a greater ORAC score, and they were um, doing a much more efficient job of increasing our production of our own endogenous antioxidants. And this is all very exciting. But really, since then, since the 70s or so, there's really been no new technologies. There's been just really refinement and uh, tweaking of what we've already had. This area of redox signaling science is growing extremely rapidly because it applies to 
all aspects of science. It applies to plants. It applies to bacteria. It applies to our cells that are you know, more sophisticated and differentiated, the eukaryotic cells. And so because of this broad scope uh, of applications of this new science, uh, we've got um, exploding uh, resources. There are uh, journals and, and uh, at least a half a dozen journals that are published on a monthly basis uh, with original science being released on, on redox signaling, as well as multiple textbooks and conferences worldwide on the subject of antioxidants and redox signaling. So I believe, as does Dr. Samuelson, this, this technology is destined to fuel some of the greatest advances in science this century. Um, so what I'd like to do is just kind of give a, an overview of, of this science and kind of where it applies. So this is the science of healing. Our, our body is always in the process of healing, and our capacity to heal really is a be the best way of describing what health is. So the cell is really the basic building block of life. Our cells in our body are diverse in nature and, and in their function, but they all share common operations. Cells all have a cell wall, a membrane that uh, helps us transport uh, food and nutrients inside and get waste materials out. Uh, cells have complex communication systems that kind of can be compared to cell phones in a way, and these vital messages are sent from cell to cell and from system to system, um, crucial messages about uh, the need for resources and, and the need for interaction and integration of our functions. Cells contain uh, various organelles like our mitochondria, which are very, very important. The nucleus contains our genetic material. and uh, the mitochondria, by the way, are, are the, the source of redox molecules in our cell. Mitochondria pro produce energy uh, through the process of oxidative phosphorylation. And as we produce energy, the, the name for this energy is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. As we produce this energy, the, the mitochondria create redox molecules uh, in our cells. And these molecules have a purpose. Their job is to donate or accept electrons uh, and to help our many, the various cellular chemical pathways. Um, it, it allows those, uh, the, through those donations or acceptances of electrons, our body can function. If we fail to produce these redox molecules, we perish. We perish within hours. And this is how important they are. And so back in the late 70s when I was in college, we didn't really know that these molecules had a purpose. We knew they were produced. We thought they were kind of a waste product or an exhaust product. But today we know they're absolutely vital. So um, let me talk a few seconds about some of the systems in our body. And, and, and these are systems that actually utilize redox signaling molecules. Uh, the antioxidant shield system is crucial to our body. It helps us protect ourselves from uh, toxins, from metabolic waste, and, and from uh, free radicals and things like that. And so we uh, have uh, really two crucial antioxidant molecules that we produce. These are complicated enzyme-like mo molecules. The first one's called glutathione peroxidase, and the second one is superoxide dismutase. So these are vital um, antioxidants. Their, their production is under the regulation of the transcription factor, and certain nutrients that we eat will help uh, translocate transcription factor so that the nucleus will be stimulated or directed to help produce more or less of these cr critical antioxidants. But what we've learned is that just having them present doesn't mean that they're operational or that they're functioning with efficiency. These antioxidants have to have certain um, redox signaling molecules, they're called reductants, that actually donate electrons to allow these antioxidants to neutralize the dangerous uh, toxins and free radicals. These 
toxins and free, free radicals typically have a positive charge. And so without an abundance of these negatively charged little tiny particles, little tiny redox molecules, these, these powerful antioxidants are really unable to neutralize these dangerous um, toxins. So that's where uh, we activate the efficiency of our antioxidants with redox signaling molecules. The cell membrane transport system is, is essentially lubricated by the presence of redox molecules. This, this whole mechanism kind of slows down into a sluggish, boggish type, uh, type pace without the presence of, of these little tiny molecules to activate it. So in other words, we can't get food and nutrients in and the oxygen into our cells without the presence of redox molecules. And likewise, we can't release the waste. So that membrane transport system is critical to be, to be really uh, allowing our body, our cells, to have good health. The communication system, like I mentioned, the cell phones that our cells have are absolutely critical. And cells need to be able to uh, talk to the near, nearby cells in it. In it. Let's say there's a, a group of tissue. Let's say it's your liver cells. And liver cells talk to their neighbor liver cells. And when a cell is stressed or challenged, it's going to try and uh, take care of, of repairing itself. But if it's in trouble, it's going to signal to the neighbor cells, look, I'm beyond the repair. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and commit cellular suicide. And they, it will actually kill itself. It's called apoptosis. But that, that, that needs to signal to the next, the next door cell to say, look, um, I'm, I'm leaving. Um, it's time to replicate so you can fill in the gap and replace me uh, in my absence. And so without redox signaling molecules, these are the messenger molecules of communication. It's as though your cell phone doesn't have any bars, calls get dropped, and there's no ability to communicate. So. Uh, healing in homeostasis is the best way to really define health. Yeah. Every health problem or disease is a direct result of damaged cells. If you have dysfunctional cells that go undetected and unrepaired, you're going to develop disease. We can have oxygen, food, and um, the release of waste products, but without the healing process, there's really not going to be any sustained, viable life. And so every day we're exposed to the sun's harmful rays, to toxins, to germs and infections. Uh, even exercise um, has been shown to da uh, damage cells and uh, destroy cells. And without uh, redox signaling molecules, our cellular repair processes really, really aren't going to uh, be able to take place. So today, we're seeing uh, in our practices and across, really uh, across all industrialized countries, an epidemic of degenerative diseases like, let's say, diabetes. You know, 20 years ago, the incidence of diabetes in, in America was about 3%. Today, uh, it's 11%. That's nearly a 400% increase in, in just a generation. So the problem is connected to cells that lack the capacity to detect and repair uh, a, a cellular machinery problem. And our genetics has not changed in only one generation. The problem is in our inability or our ability to adapt to the stresses at a cellular level. Uh, partially healthy cells sometimes lack the ability to recognize that they are dysfunctional. And then they go on and replicate in this state of mediocrity. The consequences are devastating to the tissue and to the organism. So redox signaling science is demonstrating that when there is the presence of balanced redox signaling molecules, there's, uh, this allows cells to detect and repair and replace themselves efficiently. So to kind of summarize, if we've got tissue um, that is not aware that it's out of balance and not functioning at peak efficiency because there's not enough messaging going on. Those cells will go ahead and replace themselves and replicate, and that tissue will live on in this half state of uh, half halfway functioning state of uh, uh, being. And it's it's really a, a, a serious serious problem. 
So um, cells have uh, a job in our in our body. They one of their first jobs is, is just to defend themselves, and we have this antioxidant shield that helps uh, as a primary defense for exposure to uh, imbalances in, in in the environment of that cell. And if if that de defense is not up to speed, cells need to be able to then repair themselves. And when there's an, uh, a, cor a correct balance inside of the cell, it's going to be able to correct its ability to, to, fu to function and repair any kind of damage that occurs. In, in addition, cells have to be able to detect the presence of trouble, uh, the, uh, the presence of an infection, uh, a virus, or a, an illness and, uh, that would be um, ready to take over our, our being. So in, in, as the virus were to uh, invade a tissue, a cell recognizes the presence of that, that pathogen with the help of redox signaling molecules. And when it rec can recognize the nature of that threat, then and only then will it be able to um, elicit a proper response. So what's been exciting is that um, there have been advances in an understanding of how to apply the science to our cellular health. And this is sort of where I came in to learn about ASEA. And I, I read Dr. Samuelson's book on the science of healing revealed. And as I recognized that there was the possibility of producing a, uh, a, a supplement that has stabilized redox signaling molecules, I became very excited about the potential for um, providing for my patients as, as well as to myself the opportunity to um, create the presence of balanced redox signaling molecules, whereas my own cells had lost the capacity to produce them. We know from research, in fact, this was done uh, several years ago at the Mayo Clinic, they did muscle biopsy on um, healthy people at various ages in life. They began at the age of 19, and they went all the way to 90. Decade, they had um, uh, done an analysis. And as they did these muscle biopsies, they actually looked under the microscope and counted the number of mitochondria per cell. They also were able to measure the amount of ATP that these mitochondria were producing. And they also did um, VO2 max studies on these people to measure their exercise capacity. Uh, and, and here's the intriguing finding. Each decade of age that you went down the pike, the cells lost about 8% of their mitochondria population. The cells had a 8% decrease in the amount of energy produced by the remaining mitochondria. And there was about an 8% per decade drop in VO2 max capacity. In other words, the, um, the ability of the muscle cells to create uh, power. And so this is just the fact of life, that as we age, we're going to lose efficiency. So the, the trick is whether is not whether or not we're going to age, because we know we're going to age. The question is, will we be able to age in balance? So we all know people who, uh, especially many years ago, who lived a very active lifestyle, let's say a farmer who is uh, out working uh, physically, you know, hard labor every day. People seem to manage to stay in balance. And today, as we have a more sedentary lifestyle and our diets are, are full of more refined foods, we're missing some of the key components that our lifestyle used to provide. And so we're in desperate need of support. And so the, the, the 
concept was, would it be possible to create a stable form of redox signaling molecules that we could supplement our cells with? And the answer is yes, as it has been done. And this has been done uh, through the efforts of a team of scientists uh, headed up by Dr. Gary Samuelson. And so uh, what has been accomplished is that, that, that there's a, uh, a supplementation that uh, contains uh, stabilized redox signaling molecules that we can uh, provide for our body. This product is stable um, to the extent that it has a shelf life of a year now. Instead of milliseconds, these redox signaling molecules have been stabilized. They've been manufactured from uh, common materials, uh, the same materials that our cells use to manufacture redox signaling molecules, ASEA uses. And so this, um, the, the, the combination of pure salt and highly purified uh, water, uh, then um, this saline solution is a, a special electrical current between electrodes that, in a specialized environment, uh, creates uh, this gr grouping of redox signaling molecules that are exactly the same ones that we produce in our, in our own cells. These molecules are uh, native to our body. They are assimilated just like water. We don't have to digest or uh, you know, process them as, as we take them into our body. And uh, this, the, uh, the implications are um, profound because this is the first time there's ever been uh, the capacity to to supplement our bodies with um, this, these kind of stabilized molecules. So as we do this, what we're providing is, in a, in a sense, is a buffet of molecules that our body can utilize as it chooses. Now, we in the health professions, we think about um, treating conditions. And that's not at all what, what the concept here is with redox signaling science. And, and it doesn't even, this has, there's never been anything like this. This is what's so, so exciting. We think of the application of some sort of health uh, treatment. Let's say it, it's a, a, a botanical or a nutritional supplement or a vitamin or, or whatever that's going to be taking a person from point A to point B. And so we want to go to a place where uh, we're going to be moving uh, in a specific direction to move us to balance. And this treatment or application is going to uh, help correct and, and move our uh, physiology in a more positive direction. When we have this directional application, we have to be you know, careful to monitor things and watch things because um, there's going to be interactions. Any nutritional technology or pharmaceutical technology absolutely is going to have some kind of interaction with other treatments because we're metabolizing these entities in our internal organs. That would be in contrast to redox signaling molecules, which are not metabolized by any internal um, organs at all. When we're entertaining the concept of helping our body adapt with the use of redox signaling molecules as a supplement, now what we're looking at is an adaptogenic response. So our body will pick and choose as it sees fit to do. Not according to what we might want, but what our body chooses because we're, we're providing this molecular uh, support, and then the body will utilize these molecules at such a foundational level that it will create its own adaptogenic response as to what it wants to do. So if we have a problem, let's say, with our metabolism, and it's, and it's way too slow, we're feeling sluggish and lightheaded and weak and sweaty, um, and we're finding ourselves reaching for food all the time because we're trying to kind of rev up our metabolism. Um, we find that when people drink 
um, ASEA, which contains these balanced redox signaling molecules that are stabilized, that things normalize. On the contrary, when people's um, metabolism is uh, you know, running with numbers that are too high and people are having to be very careful about their intake of carbohydrates and very careful about restricting calories and so forth, we find that the metabolism comes right back down into balance uh, with having this foundational support. So it's, it's very in intriguing that we're just allowing the body to tap into its own wisdom. It knows what to do, but it hasn't had these kinds of resources since we were youngsters. You know, when we're born, when we're, you know, in our uh, youthful years before our teens, we really have tremendous cellular efficiencies. That's why we can, you know, go all day and play outside and, you know, run and play and do things and, and really never feel sore the next day because we repair almost while we're playing as children. And then as we age, we lose that efficiency. I'm reminded of, uh, of marathon runners who, you know, to qualify for the Boston Marathon every decade pretty much, the, the times go up about, <laughs> interesting, about 10%, not dissimilar from uh, the study from the Mayo Clinic. And so um, uh, this, as you might guess, has been a very inter interesting secret weapon of many professional amateur athletes who are looking for a competitive edge. And I can speak anecdotally uh, about myself. I have enjoyed uh, endurance running for many years. In my 40s, I, I competed in nearly a half a dozen marathons. And then I couldn't train any longer. I would, I would try and put the 25 to 30 miles a week on, and my body just couldn't take it. So in my uh, 50s, I've been unable to uh, really do any kind of training for long-distance running until now. And so about uh, six, seven months ago, I began training for a May 1st marathon in Cincinnati, and my body held up quite well, and I managed to uh, run faster on May 1st this year than I did 10 years ago in, in my race. And although I'm not a speed demon, uh, I'm excited about being back in the game. And I'm back in the game because I'm taking advantage of a new scientific breakthrough. It's literally a breakthrough that is providing my body with a balanced source of redox signaling molecules that I'm utilizing in my body's own infinite wisdom. And it's choosing to adapt to the various challenges that I've experienced in my own unique life. And that's what every single person has the ability to do. And by the way, um, we have plants in our house that uh, enjoy ASEA, and they flourish. Um, people wonder about the fact this is made from salt and water, and they wonder, if, is there any salt in this product? And the answer is no. In essence, when this electrical current is applied, the, the atoms are separated apart. And so the chloride ions, about 80% of them, and um, the hydrogen and oxygen uh, atoms that are in the H2O, the water, are, re are reorganized into different molecular combinations, just like our mitochondria have configured. And so we create these redox molecules from the original product. And so we now have um, a new entity. It's kind of like when you make bread, you start out with wheat and water and flour and sugar and, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, and at the end, you've got bread. But when you have a, a, a slice of bread, I'll be darned if you can squeeze it and, you know, pound on it. You're not going to find the flour because it's been transformed with heat into this new entity called bread. In essence, that's what it's What's happened as we've manufactured uh, redox signaling molecules from raw materials, uh, and the, there's a tiny amount of sodium that is, that is maintained in the product to create some electrical neutrality. And it's um, an insignificant amount of sodium. Um, it's 123 milligrams per four ounces, which is the equivalent amount of uh, sodium that you'll find in a normal-sized carrot or a slice of bread. So if your diet will allow for a slice of bread, uh, you're, you're going to be A-OK -okay consuming ASEA. 
So, um, are there any contraindications to the to the use and application of redox signaling supplementation? The answer is no. There are no pharmaceutical products that this um, product interacts with, which is a, a fantastic thing. Even people who are taking medications like Coumadin or um, um, they're taking sophisticated treatments such as medications to prevent rejection of uh, transplanted organs. We've not had any, uh, there's no evidence, nor is there any scientific theoretical capacity for redox signaling molecules that are native to our body to, be, uh, to have any drug interaction. So we describe ASEA as transparent to pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals. So it, uh, it has a, a wonderful safety profile. This product has no known toxicities. That's a very rare statement to be made. Uh, we have scientific studies on human cells that demonstrate that there is absolutely no evidence of toxicities, even at uh, amounts 20 times the levels that you could obtain from oral supplementation of ASEA. That's fascinating. And then on the topic of science, we have uh, uh, in vitro studies on human endothelial cells that demonstrate ASEA increases the effectiveness and efficiency of glutathione and superoxide dismutase by more than 500%. And in addition, we upregulate uh, the production by, through translocation of transcription factors. Uh, for approximately two hours after consumption. Uh, and and uh, the other interesting component of that, for those that are, that are familiar with that from other nutraceutical products that do similar things, ASEA does not have any evidence of an inflammatory response that many other nutraceuticals do when there's upregulation of production through trans translocation of tra transcription factors. This is a very unique phenomenon, and it's sort of raised a lot of eyebrows uh, into how that could be possible, because typically that is um, a side effect of um, increasing the production of these powerful antioxidants. So I'd just kind of like to close with uh, some summary statements, and that is uh, this. Cellular health is really the, the, the most important concept to grasp here. If, if our cells are healthy, then so are we. If we have a health problem, we know we've got damaged cells. And so we've got to think cellular. And the most important cellular function is the maintaining of a balanced redox potential in our cells. And so this redox, the, the word redox is um, an, an acronym for oxidation reduction molecules. And so that's where the redox comes from. Our redox potential is the most important uh, denominator for our health. And so if we have the ability to maintain a balance in our redox signaling molecule uh, uh, milieu, so to speak, then we have the ability to adapt to all the challenges and, and stresses and issues that we are confronted. And we're going to have to adapt. That's just part of life. And so to have this uh, capacity is, is fascinating, and it's empowering, and it's changing the way I have looked at health. After 30 years in medicine, I've kind of developed an understanding of how things tend to work out. When you are in this spot, let's say, a condition, uh, we kind of know what it's going to look like in 10 and 15 years. Today, as a result of this new potential to provide balance in our bodies, I've had to throw out my old paradigm. And I look at health and life very, very differently. It's exciting to not have to tell people any longer that they're just going to have to live with it because I don't know that now because of what I've, what I've watched with the, the power of this new technology and this new science as, as we find 
new and um, innovative ways 